Hey everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, I will give you the, the architecture of what we have deployed till now and what how the call flow works so that we can decide on the architecture, how should we design and deploy our 5G based on the various network functions that we have and what are the scenarios possible. So we'll talk about that in the upcoming videos, but in this video, I'm just talking about two things. The first thing is the current architecture that I've deployed. So I have a virtual machine called so 5G in a box, which is basically the open 5Gs. And then I have another virtual machine called UV Ransom, which contains GNodeB and GUV both inside a VM. And the 5G in a box is the complete open 5Gs in one box. It is connected to a NAT network, which has a subnet 192.168.56.0 slash 24 and when I say NAT network this means that this network is connected to the host so this is the host and you can see these are the guest virtual machines so this is the guest VM1 and this is the guest VM2 for UE NANSIM as I mentioned I have provided the IP address dot 102 and for 5G in a box I had provided an IP of dot 101 so basically the IP would be 192.168 56.101 and here it would be 56.102 so this is the basic architecture as we split the architecture mode we are we can use the same IP address and if we create another VM like for example if we create the UPF VM here we can provide the IP 103 here so in this way we can enhance our architecture using the IP address of this subnet and all the virtual machine can connect to the host as well as uh, we can say in the same network using this NAT interface or using the NAT uh, network that we have provided provisioned in the virtual machine. So let us talk about the signaling flow. And this is very important for you to understand because based on the signaling flow, you would be able to decide how your architecture should be. So I'm going to define, I've already defined some, I would say various network function like UE, GNODE-B, AMF, SMF, UPF, PCF, and AUSF. So these are the initial components that will come into picture when we have the initial registration. All right, so I'm talking about the initial registration as of now, nothing else. So this means the UE should be moving to RRC idle, that is the current state of the UE, to RRC connected, and we should be able to have some packet communication going through. So as I mentioned, the first state or the UE state is RRC idle so rrc idle means it is not camped to the network there are no signals on the network and the ue does not know about the network and the network also does not know about the ue so suppose we spin up our g node b and it is start it starts radiating then ue can listen to the signal right we will have preamble rag and all these uh you can say signaling that will effectively help ue create a radio link towards the G node B. And once the radio link is created, it will send a RRC request. So the first message or the first layer three message is RRC setup request. Based on the request, the G node B would reply with RRC setup response. And then the UE will reply with RRC setup complete. So this is the layer three signaling on the radio RF level on the uh, that is the radio resource control. And as I mentioned that three important parts of it are setup request, setup response and setup complete. With this setup complete, there would be another signaling which we call NAS. And this NAS message would be essentially registration request. So this NAS means non-access stratum. So access stratum is this one. So this is the access stratum. This means the access network. And this is your, from here, it would be non-access stratum. So this NAS message is transparent to the G node B. It is directed towards the AMF. So G node B would forward this NAS message to AMF. And here we'll have the G node B will save the 
identity of UE in form of a NGAP ID for that UE so that whenever it is communicating with the AMF it would know that this UE has this NGAP ID just for its reference so here we have the initial UE that is the registration request or the initial UE message and it would be forwarded to AMF so the UE would be reaching to AMF through GNodeB and those messages would be transferred into GNodeB and that is called the NAS message so next thing would be once AMF receives that initial UE message AMF would try to identify if the UE is the one which it is claiming to be so here starts the authentication authorization and initial identity a verification process so the AMF would be responding with a NAS message and that would be identification request based on this the UE would be responding to AMF with the identification response so this is the NAS ID request and NAS ID response so based on this identification request AMF would try to query the AUSF so here the identity that is being questioned by AMF is called sushi or subscriber concealed identity so this concealed identity is being requested by the AMF and once the AMF receives that sushi it will send it to AUSF AUSF is so far all right and it would be UE authentication request so and it will receive a response from AUSF UE authentication response in the background AUSF will query UDM to fetch the details for uh, this UE and perform the uh, various functions for identification of the UE whether that uh, sushi belongs to which SUPI and this SUPI would be provided back to AMF so it will get the sushi here and it will receive the SUPI all right it has AMF as a SUPI now so this SUPI can be used to calculate or authenticate whether the UE is one which is claiming it to be so AMF would send some uh, challenges to UE which is KI and in, in 5G we have NG KI it will send a RAND of the random number and then it will send some algorithms that UE needs to use you can see to calculate and provide a response so this is called the NAS authentication request so based on these inputs provided by the AMF it will reply UE would reply with some calculation in form of NAS authentication response so based on this authentication response AMF would be able to decide whether it has to authenticate the UE or not once the authentication is successful so if I say this authentication is successful we just say here we have authentication successful what will happen there would be a need for encryption and this is called security mode so the first one is security mode command and here so the response would be NAS security mode complete keep in mind there is a command here which is different to request and response it is being commanded by the AMF that you have to use this security modes and you have to enable a secured communication now and it has to be uh, confirmed by the UE that it is going to use those security mode that has been provided by AMF and provide a acknowledgement to that so far so good we have the security mode we have the encrypted communication enabled let me just zoom it in a bit so that you are able to see the rest of the part so now we AMF has authenticated and the encryption is there next thing AMF would try to find out what are the policies that have been configured for this UE this is called policy control create which would be provided by PCF in the form of policy control now AMF can instruct SMF subscriber management context request so this means AMF is telling to SMF that I have a UE you have to activate the user plane uh, related functionality so this is called the subscriber management 
context request. So what would SMF do? It would, it would allocate the UE IP address and it will also allocate the packet data unit and whatever session related functionality for the user plane, it would perform that. Now the SMF will talk to UPF. So this is the UPF and let me mention here and this is the SMF. So these two will talk and SMF will instruct UPF and that is called PFCP session. And your UPF will acknowledge that it had created a session modification request and this is PFCP session modification response. So basically SMF is telling that you need to create a session for the UE so that UE can access the data network. And here if there is any browsing request the UP UPF will try to buffer it till we have the downlink user plane connectivity towards the UE. After creating this context SMF context response the SMF will give the request to AMF for the SMF context response. So once the AMF receives the SMF SM context or the subscriber management context response, it will instruct the G node B with the initial context response. So you can see here the request was raised here, initial UE registration request on the NGAP and the response is coming here. Based on this response, G node B will instruct the UE for RRC reconfiguration basically to ask UE to enable more bearers so that it can use the services and UE will respond with RRC reconfig complete. And once the reconfig is completed, GNODB will tell the AMF for the initial context complete. So here your the control plane part is over. Now the UE and it can communicate directly with the UPF here for any packet forwarding request. So this is the initial, you can say the initial registration signaling flow. And you can see here, what are the interested parts that we need to take care of. So first of all, it's the UE. UE is connecting to G node B. For us, it's in the same virtual machine. So this will be part of UE ransom. All right, then we have AMF and SMF and UPF, which are the key part. Now what we have here right now is AMF, SMF and UPF. In fact, let me just draw this. These all are part of this virtual machine. But one thing to note is that G node B is connecting to AMF only and G node B is connecting to UPF. And UE is accessing AMF, UPF based on the G node B itself. So for the connection for G node B, we need to have one connection towards AMF and we need to have another connection to UPF. That's it. So these two connections we need to define. Now if we go to our example, both of them are here in this virtual machine, not 10101, sorry, not 101. So here the IP address of G node B would be not 102 and this one would also be 102 and this one would be not 101 and this one would be not 101. So let us configure these interfaces and let us try to connect our call. So if I check the vagrant status, all right, I have both the virtual machine running, vagrant search 5G box and I will open another tab. So I'm inside UE Ransom and if I go to config, so this is the G node B config and I've updated the IP address ngapip 56.102 and GTP IP is 56.102. So both are same. This is our local IP and AMF config is 56.101. So this means that the AMF IP is dot one one as I've shown you here. So the G node B IP address is one to seven dot zero dot zero dot one. It is the same as what we have defined in the G node B link IP. So that is correct. Radio link simulation. So our UE 
configuration is correct now let's go to open 5gs and we can just do let see open 5gs mf dot yaml and the njb ip address is 192.168.56.101 that is correct that our amf ip address is 56.101 all right and we'll check the upf because that is the other part that would interface with the g node b and the gtpu is 192.168.56.101 keep in mind pfcp is between smf to upf so you should not change this rather this is the only ip that you need to change this is a subnet so the ue would be uh, provided an ip from this subnet and it would be it would work with that so that's all now what we are going to do is emulate this connect connectivity so let us start with doing tail hyphen f var log star dot open oh, 5 gs star dot log so these are the oh you can say the logs and i will open one more so i will just do build and our g node b you can see g node b one dot yaml so we have the ng setup procedure successful and the sttp connection is established and you can see n2 accepted 56.102 56.102 number of g node b's are now one and this is the maximum number of streams 10 for the sttp let's go to config all right so this is the ue part so till now all good we have the session here ue count is 1 and then we have the session here so i can use a tool called nr binder and i will just confirm the ip address so i tried it again and then the ip address has changed so it's 45.06 now i had some issue and i am still facing the issues so but with the nr binder if i'm trying to reach this uh, google.com from this ip address it's going through and in this way you can test it and validate your setup if it is working fine using nr binder and in the next video i will go through the ue ran sim tools that you can use while validating the configuration so i hope you enjoyed this video and in case you have any question you can ask me in the comment box and i will see you in the next one